June 22nd, 2001, The Fast and the Furious hits the big screens in the United States of America. A story about a Los Angeles police officer, Brian O'Connor, who finds himself at a crossroads, torn between his duties and his newfound love for the street racing world he was tasked to infiltrate and dismantle. A movie where Vin Diesel can actually get visually hurt in the film. What a time to be alive. The first installment of this franchise would gain about 140 million domestically and 63 million internationally. This is about a 70 to 30% split in favor of Hollywood. But how fast things can change. As of that year, there are zero Fast and the Furious releases in China. And that trend would continue for more than 12 years. But that isn't stopping Dominic Toretto from making as many Fast and Furious movies as physically possible. Year after year, this franchise got bigger and bigger and bigger. Except for Tokyo Drift, but let's not talk about that. This momentum can also be seen in the box office numbers for Hong Kong, which might be a telltale sign for things to come. Then came Fast and Furious 6 on May 24th, 2013. With a $97 million domestic opening, it was shaping out to be the biggest installment of the franchise franchise ever. And when it was all said and done, it did just that. With a budget of $160 million, it grossed about $239 million domestically and $550 million internationally. This means now there's a 30 to 70% split in favor of international numbers. Interesting. <laughs> that gives a grand total of $789 million worldwide. Fast and Furious fever was here to stay and that was clear. But the big change this movie had over previous generations of the franchise is Fast and Furious 6 had a record breaking opening in China. Securing the number one spot with a projected $24 million debut weekend following its release. This performance marked Universal's highest opening in the territory and positioned the film as the second highest three day debut of 2013 in China, just behind Iron Man 3. The success in China played a huge part in the movie's global gross. Fast and Furious 6 swiftly became the top grossing movie in China for its opening week, outperforming other Hollywood releases and showing a resurgence of American films in the Chinese market. The film's dominance in Chinese cinemas also highlighted the competitive landscape for Hollywood films in China. Amidst the mix of domestic and international releases, when the dust finally settled, Fast and Furious 6 grossed a lifetime amount of $66 million in China. This gives a top spot for all other international countries, but is still three times smaller than the domestic numbers. But that is a hard thing to beat. And it is unrealistic to even come close to the United States numbers for something as polarizing as Fast and Furious. Right? <laughs> On April 3rd, 2015, Furious 7 hit the big screens across the world, raking in a whopping $147 million domestically for its opening. When you're going against a $190 million budget, things are starting to look pretty promising. Plus, it would eventually be the highest ranking Fast and Furious movie on both Rotten Tomatoes and then second place on IMDb, just behind Fast Five. However, we're still missing a big player in this and the main person of this video, that being China. But they would not see the release until April 12th, so Universal could do nothing else but wait and see what happens. Heavy rain and stormy conditions did not deter Chinese moviegoers from racing to see Furious 7 at midnight screenings on Sunday, with the Universal holdover taking $8.05 million. In China, it took 91% of the market share on Sunday for the biggest single day ever in that country's history. Furious 7 got the big boost from its debut in China, where it opened in first place on Sunday and grossed an estimated $68.6 .6 million. That is the highest grossing one day result ever for the People's Republic. The film became a significant commercial success in China, setting multiple records from its release on April 12th. In addition to the records I already stated, its opening day included a record-breaking $5 million from an IMAX run, which ultimately achieved a record-breaking $39 million in IMAX sales in China. Throughout the first week, it accumulated $245.9 million, and over its opening weekend, it earned an impressive figures from thousands of screens. Remarkably, it reached a revenue milestone of 1 billion Chinese won in just five days a record pace and eventually became the highest grossing foreign film in China. Within 15 days, its Chinese box office earnings exceeded those from Canada and the United States, marking it as the first film in China to gross over 2 billion Chinese won. This success is attributed partly to the China Film Group Corporation, a state-owned distributor that invested in the film, taking a reported 10% stake. Overall, Fear 7 surpassed $800 million in just two weeks globally. As of recording this nine years later, it brought in $353 million domestically in an astounding amount of $1.1 
billion internationally. That is an incredible 23 to 77% split in favor of international revenue. This totaling $1.5 billion worldwide if you didn't want to do the math. Remember when this was a 70-30% split in favor of domestic? <laughs> but how did China do individually in the end? China has a lifetime gross of $391 million. This makes a very rare situation when a Hollywood film domestically loses to an international country. But why did this happen? What made China just become so in love with the Fast and Furious movies that's somewhat out of nowhere? Well, there's no definitive answers, just as most things. But there are some general ideas. A random person on Reddit says it has to do with three things. Well, four, but I combined it to three. International locations, diverse ethnic cast, and then just the general absurdity of the plot being more like an international film than like an American film. But that's just one person's opinion, so let me try to find something else. A great YouTube video I found dives into the exact question I'm asking. Why is Fast and Furious so popular in China? To give a quick summary of the main ideas in the video, the full video will be linked in the description by the way. The Fast and Furious series is highly popular in China due to its simple high impact entertainment value that aligns well with the needs of an audience living under the country's intense work culture. Characterized by the 996 schedule, this means 9am to 9pm, 6 days a week, these films offer an ideal escape for viewers looking for a straightforward, engaging content that doesn't require much mental effort serving as a relief from the pressures of daily life and labor exploitation. Additionally, the series facilitates community bonding and provides a therapeutic space for relaxation despite its narratives and impact being transient in viewers' memories. Finally, an article from Taylor's University can be summarized into saying this. The Fast and Furious franchise's popularity in China is attributed to its focus on long-term relationships and collectivism, resonating with Chinese cultural values. The films also reflect the cultural model of Hofstede, Stuf Hofstede, I've did it. <laughs> Emphasizing aspects like power distance, individualism versus collectivism, and masculinity, which are pertinent to Chinese audiences. Additionally, the series portrayal of family, not limited by traditional definitions, but based on emotions and passions, aligns with collectivist values contributing significantly to its success in China. But overall, China loves Fast and Furious the same reason we all love Fast and Furious. The Fast and Furious franchise is beloved globally for its unique blend of emotional depth, focusing on family and relationship, alongside the spectacular action sequences and self-aware humor. Okay. But as I said, that was nine years ago at this point, and we still got four more movies until current day Fast and Furious, so let's move it along. When Diesel and some of his fellow cast members went to Beijing for the Furious 7 premiere, he hinted that Furious 8 might be shot there. If there's another Fast and Furious, it will be filmed in China, he told fans, later telling local media that the idea of an actor from China being a part of a Fast saga feels inevitable. In inevitable. <laughs> He also shouted, I love China to hundreds of fans. But from my research, this never actually happened. I don't think they ever filmed in China. So I guess he doesn't have that big of a pull as you might think. Does this also play a role in the box office numbers to come? Let's find out. The Fate and the Furious was released on April 14th in both the United States and China with the largest budget to date for the franchise of $250 million. Before I get into the numbers, I just want to read the description for the movie real quick. When a mysterious woman seduces Dominic Toretto into the world of terrorism and a betrayal of those closest to him, the crew face trials that will test them as never before. A little bit of a change from Los Angeles police officer Brian O'Connor finds himself at a crossroads. But it should be noted that during the filming of Fear 7, not to bring down the mood, but Paul Walker actually died, so this will be the first official film without him. The film opened to $99 million domestically, which is a huge drop from the $147 million of the last film. But that ain't stopping Chinese fans from coming in in droves. Furious 8 accumulated an unprecedented 65.6 .6 million in China by the end of Friday, a new benchmark for the biggest single day ever. The three-day weekend estimate is 192 million, making it the top three-day opening of all time in China. Overall, while getting fairly mixed reviews, The Fate of the Furious took in only $226 million domestically. I say only like that isn't a huge amount. <laughs> but it was saved dramatically by the international numbers of $1 billion. This billion being spearheaded by a record-breaking 393 million from China. That means they beat the previous movie's numbers by $3 million, they once again beat the domestic numbers, but even in a bigger way, and the biggest percentage split of top lifetime grosses of all time. You know, like the one with Avatar, Endgame, like the big list. I didn't find a bigger split than this one. This is an 18 to 82% split. 
in favor of international box office. I was at 18 to 82 <laughs> percent. Okay, so that was a lot. We're going to keep going, but I'm going to summarize some of these next years like I did before because we still got a couple more movies to go. Okay, so from this point on, we see a pretty normal trend that instead of going up, it's going down. They would never hit the 1 billion mark again. The domestic numbers would never surpass $180 million. And China would start to lose momentum with barely breaking 200 million. The split percentage would also maintain a normal level of 23 to 77% in favor of international return, obviously. However, not even this tells the complete story that is the travesty, travesty of Fast and Furious X. The reason I put travesty in quotations is because don't get me wrong, it still made a lot of money. It brought in about $704 million worldwide, so it wasn't any type of box office flop in the grand scheme, but definitely when you're comparing it to the other films in this franchise, it didn't do great. Also, at this point, I should make it clear my involvement with the franchise. So to be entirely honest, I've only oh, seen two brother, Fast and Furious movies. Whoa, hey, hey. <laughs> I saw the first one on a plane, I believe. Pretty good. I liked it. Don't remember much of the nitty gritty details, but yeah, it was good. It was good. I won't lie. The second was Fast X, which I saw in theaters, where I said Cargo Room on Letterboxd and gave it one star. <laughs> so I'm clearly not that invested in these movies on like an emotional level. I'm just looking at them statistically because I found it interesting. Um, and from that point of view, Fast X did not do great. Not only are the reviews nothing to praise, but the box office numbers are terribly low. 67 million opening domestically, $146 million total, 559 million internationally, but even China only brought in $140 million this time around, making it the first time in seven years of making these movies that it did less than the domestic amount. Also, now that we have no spoilers ahead, here's a chart of all the movies that made more in China than domestically. As you can see, it is dominated by just a couple of franchises. This has me wondering where the franchise is exactly going. Release date for Fast and Furious 11 is officially set for April 4th, 2025 pending any unforeseen delays related to the ongoing actor strike. The actor strike is done, so there might be an update soon, but this might still be good for April 4th. I mean, it's 2025, and it's Fast and Furious. <laughs> and Vin Diesel says that Fast 11 will be the final entry in the main Fast and Furious series, but who really knows? Vin Diesel mentioned at one point a Fast 12, but at the end of the day, who cares? If you find enjoyment in these movies, more power to you. If you don't, don't watch them. I will probably go see anything new from this franchise from this point forward because my girlfriend has seen like all of them. So now now I'm in it. And I might go back and watch some of the old movies. Um, at least Tokyo Drift. I feel like that one... I've heard that one's kind of good. Not to say the other ones are bad, but you know. <laughs> but the first thing I gotta do is rewatch the old Predator movie so I know exactly what I'm talking about in this video. I am happy and mentally sane. I pinky promise. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that's, the, that's the outro.